Welcome to the Trash Cats Trash Cast. I'm Richard. I'm Steven. And god damn it, the years start coming and they don't stop coming, Steven. The years? Are they just flowing by you? That's uh, from uh, a song All Star by Smash Mouth. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't know <laughs> how mask off we want to go right now, but I am feeling like a like a tired, tuckered out little detective from all all that extensive research we've been doing. Yeah. No, it's been um it's been a lot. Um a lot I've I've been cramming into my skull a lot of information um that I never thought I would ever need. I, f- I feel like we're playing a uh, hooky by doing uh some freestyle instead, but we got we'll be super prepared for uh a very smart big brain episode next yeah, week. Big brain episode. <laughs> I think. I think tonight we just need to chill out. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. In fact, in, in uh, the spirit of chilling out, I did uh, pour myself a beer, uh, mostly because my water filter was empty, <laughs> and I wasn't patient enough to wait for it to. What kind of what kind of burr? I have a. Um, it's a porter. Um, it's an imperial porter. Um, it's called Velvet Rush by Founders. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got chocolate and uh, coffee, and I think it's barrel aged. It's very good, sounds, very sweet. Sounds very fancy, but also disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you had a four loco, we could talk. But... I mean, yeah. Did I ever tell you about the uh, my white collar four loco? No. So you take a um, monster makes those. Uh, it's called Monster Mule, and it's like a ginger beer. But it's got all the caffeine and all the other, you know, the fixins that a regular monster has. Gotcha. And you mix that with, you know, whatever liquor of your choice. You know, you can do the, the Moscow Mule style with the vodka or you can mix in, you know, some bourbon and, uh, you know, uh, do one of those. <laughs> but I, I realize that I'm drinking – basically, I'm just mixing alcohol with this, you know, energy drink. I'm having a Four loco, even if it's, you know, just dis- – Disguised like a a cocktail, like a, a fancy cocktail. Sure, sure. It's good stuff. Keeps you healthy. Keeps you strong. Yep, yeah, it's good for your bones. <laughs> Breakfast the champions. How's your week been, man? It's been uh, it's been one week since yeah. you looked at me, and uh, no, it's it's been it's been fine um, until a couple minutes ago, and it's still fine. Yeah, what mm-hmm. happened? We were about to start <laughs> recording. And you're like, I got a lady at my door. So I, I had to go deal with it. So there was a woman that came to the door. We we got the the ring doorbells installed and I, I got the notification there was some woman at the door. And um it's that normally is like whatever. You know, usually it's like they're it's almost always somebody walking down the street or we had a couple weeks ago some guy come up and he was just like mumbling into the thing and like we were <laughs> like that was weird, but like, you know, it's not like they're you know, someone trying to fuck with us or anything. But then by the time that I actually looked at the camera, she turned around and like walked back out to the car and you could see in the car, there was another person sitting out there. And then she got, she went to the car and then started walking back towards the house. And that's when I thought, okay, I need to go deal with this. There's something like something's going on. So how old was she? Um, Probably in her like fifties, late fifties ish. So where, where was your threat assessment? Like on the ocular pat down, what, what level of danger were you um, facing? Somewhat low, but okay. it's one of those where I, you know, never know. Yeah, exactly. My, my mom had said the same thing. It's like, you know, it's an, it's an older woman. Like what, you know, like I want, I'm not really af- afraid. It's like, don't act like, don't act like middle-aged people can't do shitty things. Yeah, those old uh, ladies can come gangster too. You know, well, you know, that's that's another one. It's like they can come up and, you know, you you're you're thrown off by the fact that they're, you know, uh, a middle-aged woman and then whoever's in the car, it's I I saw it as a thing like, oh, they're, you know, knocking on doors checking who's like at that is anyone home, you know, and then scoping it out later. I you know, I've I know that's a thing that people have done. Yeah, it's um, the, the old Detroit bait and switch. Yeah. <laughs> Use an old lady to knock on the door and then. <laughs> but then she was, she was acting weird too. Like she was like poking around in like the yard and like went up the drive a little bit and then like went back to the car. So I, I, 
you know, part of me is like, is there like something that was wrong? And I, I called my mom and we were talking about like, she didn't leave anything on the porch. You know, we thought maybe it was like a neighbor had gotten something for, from us or for us by mistake. And so you grabbed your AK 47 and then what? Well, actually, I, I, that's funny because I, I did grab my gun. <laughs> When I, when I saw that she was like coming up the drive, like that's going towards like my side of the house, like she's coming around the back of the house for some reason. I'm like, oh shit! Like there's no, no, we're not playing that today. Um, so you put off two warning shots into the sky, and then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I ended up not even going outside, but it was because um, I looked back at the camera thing, and she was walking back away. But it was, I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And then you know they got in their car and they drove off, but. It's just a really weird, Good especially boy. after just, you know, like I said, a couple of weeks ago, we had that dude that just came up and he was like an older dude and he came up and he was just kind of mumbling into the door a little bit and then he walked away. Just some meth mumbles, you know. Yeah, that's probably exactly what it was. Just making, you know, just doing a little incantation to make sure your house is nice and safe. It's one of those, you know, like I'm, I'm suspect of anybody. Like I'm trying to like, if I... See anything that looks a little bit suspicious to me, I'm already in like not like high threat assessment, but like something's You're strapping it, ammo belts to your chest. Like I'm, on the- <laughs> I'm approaching it with the situation that like something is the fuck up because if I don't, you yeah, know, if you, if you yeah. don't go in with that mindset, then you're not going to see that. Anytime anyone knocks on your door in 2022, yeah, exactly. Who the fuck's showing up die. unannounced? That's what I, the the. <laughs> The the people the people that live in the house behind me I, I I need to go talk to them because to do some of the renovation work I want to do in my yard uh, like on the garage and shit like that and uh, I have to go like through their yard to do it basically it butts up against the property line so I want to go like talk to them and um, I was able to find out through another neighbor that it's like an older couple and but it's like I don't want to. Just show up. It feels so weird to just show up at someone's house unannounced and knock on their door. Leaving like, a note I know that's a good it, way to do it, though. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought, too. Yeah. Or, like, send them something in the mail. Like, I can get their address and do that. Leave your number. Yeah, exactly. So I thought about just doing that. Because there is. There's something weird about it. Like, once you've – once we've it, not even that long ago, it was very normal and common. Like, that's how you contact people is – you know, you either send them a letter, give them a call, or you go to their house. And, you know, if you don't know their fucking phone number because no one has a goddamn house phone anymore, yeah, you, the fuck you going to do? So so was that really the end of the story? She left? Yeah, she left. That was it. No, that was it. It was just like this whole back and forth of trying to figure out, like, what the fuck are they doing? And then by the time they left, it was like, okay, well. Dude, that's the absolute worst when it's a cop. And you don't know if it's, like, a innocuous thing. Like, they just happen to be, like, knocking on doors or giving out information or something. Or, like, they're coming to get you. Yeah. And, like, if they know you're home and you see them knock on the door and they saw that you saw them. And you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> now I gotta go talk to this cop. It's like, am I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't, they're gonna get suspicious. Did but- I? Did I do something illegal? <laughs> a little too much crime, perhaps. Yeah, a little bit too much crime this week. <laughs> I gotta calm it down a little bit. The fed- federales are on my tail. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it's all chill and you yeah, can I, get house robbed by I did, an I old didn't, lady. Yeah, I didn't have to go shoot an old lady, so it's been a good week. <laughs> <laughs> How's your week been? <laughs> okay, I feel like um, I feel like this last week I've had better balance, which is like, I mean, it's important to everyone, but it's it's something I a- always struggle with every facet of my life, and it's like one of my primary themes. I, I don't. What do you call like a life? I don't know, like focus problem. I don't know. It's just a reoccurring thing i think about a lot like Mm -hmm. trying to find balance a a, a motif yeah little little balance motif just a little scale um and i I feel like this week i did all right with it i'm a little frustrated creatively because i've been i'm like super proud of what i'm 
making and doing with my time. Um, but I've become really, like, really perfectionisty, and you know, I anytime I'm not sleeping, I'm pretty much working on something, and I I just still can't get what I want to done in a day. So a little frustrated, but I feel like I've been handling that balance a little bit better than normal. So, and I also didn't have to shoot any old ladies. Yeah. So also it's been a good week. Yeah. Pretty chill. (laughs) Didn't even have to use my AK. Gotta say it was a good day. Maybe next week. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to bring up the last I guess it wasn't the last time we freestyled because that was just last week, right? It was like a half and half. It was a half and half. Oh, yeah. No, last week we we did some edgelord atheist shit. Yeah. But we talked about a uh, um, co-worker that I wasn't agreeing with. And then you uh, sent him a link to the episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but um, we've reached a uh, um, an understanding – and um, I, I I decided I want to keep it's I don't know it's it's a fun part of my life I guess this um, back and forth between a, I don't know it's not even like an aggressive situation it's just the most aggressive thing going on in my life right now okay so I think it's just uh something fair to talk about of like we've we've reached a we've reached a stale not a stalemate that's not the right word a um a a peaceful conclusion and we're gonna leave it at that for a minute and then you know but but if anything fucks up again then then we're gonna have some serious goddamn problems feed them to the fishes yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> i'll have to shoot an old lady <laughs> so i assume you know, it didn't come to blows, but I assume there was some sort of confrontation and, and yeah. words were had and it went well. Yes. So that's good. It, right? That's that's a good start. It's I, I, ha- I have to work with the, the I have to work with him again this week, so we'll see how she goes. Should be a different vibe though, right? Uh this yeah, thing. hopefully. Good. I I think I know what you're getting at though, where There is something like, you know, adult mode, like trying to be positive. That that's a great outcome. But there's also like a little piece of like, man, I wish I could have just like unloaded both ammo belts and like got got, you know, let go of a little more aggression. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It it would be inappropriate or whatever, but it's awfully tempting sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you go too long without any of that, and it's like, it's like pent up. It's like that pent up aggression of like, I need to take this out on something somehow. Yeah. And that's where, I think that's where the violent video games thing comes in play, and it's helpful. Is, you know, sometimes it's you go start playing some Halo, and it's like, I just killed a bunch of shit. I feel better now. I just, I just shot a bunch of shit. Dude, I act like, unless I'm playing with you or like you know my other buddies it's i i certain games are different like the game my favorite games are different but like i typically just want to play shooters and i i get like actually angry like i can get uncontrollably (laughs) angry and i have to like and i don't want to be that guy so i just have to kind of step away throw your fucking controller on the ground and break it dude i would stomp on your headset i want to like smash the tv and then go downstairs and smash that tv and then go to my neighbor's house and smash their tvs like i want to lose it sometimes i i had a buddy that went through like three controllers in the course of a few months oh yeah Um, and it's like why number one why the fuck are your parents still buying you controllers yeah yeah number one (laughs) number two like why 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 how how do you i understand Somewhat, I understand the idea of, like, getting that frustrated, getting to the point where, like, it makes you want to, like, break something. But, what like, to do it is the part that I, I don't – like, I've absolutely, like, you know, taken out my aggression in a physical way. Uh, I think I described – either last week or the week before the idea of going in, you go in the walk-in and you punch a box of broccoli. 
hits. You know, just like, just, you know, it hit something, you know, but not something that's A, expensive as fuck, and then also going to break, you know, like punching your fucking drywall, like putting a hole in your wall, like that shit. Oh, yeah. That blows me away. Oh, dude, I've put many a hole. <laughs> many a hole. You just put it, print out some shitty art and put it over to cover up all your misery and sadness. <laughs> And then Pete, the your uh, the next person that moves in, you you leave the you leave the poster there, and they're like, "Oh man, this guy must have been plotting uh, uh, Shawshank Redemption going on here." You know how satisfying it is when your <laughs> landlord gives you the the full uh, deposit back, and then you move out. And there's forty holes all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck, <laughs> dude. Between. So, yeah, I'm, like, I'm not that way anymore at all. But uh, between freshman and I'd say junior year, I went through at least 40 to 50 phones. Jesus Christ. Because anytime I would get angry, I would just throw it at the wall. (laughs) Or, like, I even got to the point where I was getting kind of controlled about it, and I would take my SIM card out and then just, like, throw it as far as I could into the street. <laughs> he took the SIM card out first. I would just chuck the, these phones the, the, in the, the middle the, of Westwood. I imagine the, the, the frustration and anger, <laughs> but the sheer focus it requires to see through that enough to take out the SIM card. It's like, I broke too many phones. I can't keep getting my numbers back. I got clientele <laughs> that <laughs> expect me to text them. The fucking... That one, I mean, back in the day, too, like, those phones could take a beating. They could, and they were like much Like a good cheaper. Nokia, you could run that motherfucker over a couple times, and it'd be straight. Yeah, I would. they would still work a lot of the time. But, man, I would just, I would either get high and lose my phone, or just break it out of anger so fucking often. It was ridiculous. I don't think I've ever lost a phone. Wow. I think the only times I've ever gotten a new phone were because the other one didn't either didn't work anymore- or I could afford it, and the other one was the old one was shit. I don't That's know. impressive. I've had the same phone number for as long as I was able to have a cell phone. I actually do too. I've had the same I, it's same phone number phone. for more than half of my life. That's pretty wild. Yeah, dude, I tell you about the time I lost my phone for a year and got it. No. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck! I got. It. I gotta think if I want to say this one or not. <laughs> That's fair. All right. I th- I was like sober for like six months. This is like towards the end of my run. Like I maybe used like less than ten times since this particular time. But I was sober like six months off heroin, and then I was like, fuck it. I just I was working at Amazon at the time and my soul is just shattering every day. I am mm-hmm. just losing my mind. But I've been sober for a little while so I had plenty of like cash on hand. Like I I was broke but I had, you know, enough enough money to go for a nice little little bender boo. So mm-hmm. I stocked up, got a bunch of dope and I had a ton of Zanny bars and they were the fentanyl pressed ones and I hadn't been using them so my tolerance is like fucked and I, I have like a massive problem with Xanax so I'm like super blacked out and I end up driving around do you know where county is? <laughs> um no I, yeah, I didn't either <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I don't I wake up driving <laughs> oh good i'm like oh fuck i am conscious now and i'm driving and it's the middle of winter and i like hit uh, a guardrail so i pulled into a parking lot and i remember thinking like i am clearly too fucked up to drive so i am gonna get out of my car and walk home right mm-hmm. but i don't know where i am <laughs> oh jesus So, what had happened was, I went to get out of my car, and my cell phone fell to the parking lot, right? Mm Mm-hmm. 
but I got out, and the door closed behind me with my keys on the seat. <gasps> Dude, it's like like 10 degrees outside, and I had a, a zip-up hoodie, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like fucked. So, I I don't know. And I mean, I was like in and out of consciousness. I don't know what I was thinking, but I decided to <laughs> try to get back into my car because I think I was worried about like actually freezing to death. So, I punched through the windows of my own car. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Dude, I destroyed my hands, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I got through, but I still couldn't, like, safely unlock the doors. So I just started walking, because I'm worried at that point the cops are going to just arrest me, breaking into my own car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, it, it, dude, I walked for so many hours, right? I realize I don't have my phone. I left it in the parking lot. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like so intoxicated. I know if anyone sees me, I'm going to jail, right? Mm-hmm. My car, the windows are smashed. There's blood all over. Your blood. <laughs> yeah, my blood. So I'm walking around with blood on my hands. I have no keys, no phone, just like a hoodie. And it's like 10 degrees or whatever. And it's <laughs> snowing. And I'm in <laughs> county. And I don't even know where <laughs> county is. Long story short, I end up, it was, a, it was a terrible night, but my dad ended up picking me up. He's the best. He'd always show up when I needed him. He ends up getting me home. The cops eventually track me down, but there's like, you know, they couldn't do anything, right? Mm-hmm. I had already left. So I get my car back, and I still can't find my phone, right? I did the, the Google, like, find my phone thing. No mm-hmm. luck. It says it's off. Dude. No joke. Nine months pass. <laughs> <laughs> this is so crazy. Nine months pass. And I get a call from my old phone number, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, who's this? And this dude says, uh, I found this phone. And it had this as the emergency number or whatever. Because with the find my phone, you could like leave a message to the next person who turns on your phone. It's like a safety safety feature. So this person calls me up. He says he's on on parole. And he's doing one of those, I don't know if it's parole or probation, but he was doing one of those gigs where you're like community service. With when the sheriff takes you out and you pick up trash, right? Mm-hmm. He, this random dude finds my phone. He said it had 1% battery. Nine months later. <laughs> Nine months later. <laughs> he didn't plug it in, but the phone was off. So I don't know if somebody found it, but when he gave it to me, it had like water damage. It was like going into the next winter in the phone I got back and I had to pick it up from a police station which was sketchy as fuck but it was like still had like salt damage and like winter weather damage and i still have this phone to this day and use it as my alarm clock (laughs) it fucking works like a charm (laughs) dude crazy man i could not get over it now let me ask you this by chance was it a nokia flip phone it it wasn't it was one of the newer ones that are always garbage Right? Like, you yeah. you know, it was one of those phones, like, the screen was already chipped because it, I had dropped it, like, two inches and the, the screen shattered. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But somehow the battery survived nine months outside. God damn. It's a mystery. God works in mysterious God, God ways. God works in mysterious ways. Fucking praise him. <laughs> Muhammad was watching out for me that day. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, absolutely crazy. Yeah, that's fucking bonkers. The the worst I ever did with a phone was put it on the back of um we were me and David and someone else were out with his dad and they had a, a boat and uh, one of those big inflatable tubes and we were tubing on the water and uh, <laughs> as we were loading the car back up 
I had set my phone on the back of the truck and like it had a cover, you know, pickup truck, but it had a cover over the, the, you know, the bed of it there. And I had set my phone there and I realized while we're driving home on the fucking highway, like, I don't know where my phone is. And then we looked, we, I, I just out of instinct, I guess I looked back to like the last place I had it and there it was sitting on top of the fucking, the back of the pickup truck. It's crazy how they'll ride like that. Sometimes. Yeah, man. <laughs> I got lucky as hell. All right, that here's was the closest I ever came to losing a phone. That's pretty impressive. All right, here, here's a question for you. All right, so I'm really glad my life isn't how it used to be. Right. But there, there's definitely parts of it I miss every day. But part of it, part, part of what I struggle with a bit is I miss the the adventures not while they're happening but i miss having those stories accumulate yeah the story faster to tell. yeah where it's like even if like privately that story may be like sad to reflect on it, it's like i still learn a lot from it it's still like interesting there's still like funny parts it's still like uh it's, it's still uh, something spice. you can tell your tell your buddy ricky and he'll laugh at it exactly i miss uh i miss accumulating stories more because like right now i'm hardcore learn mode i'm like sharpening my my blades i'm like you know getting better and, uh, at crafts and shit you're, you're but- slowly turning into me where the most uh the, the craziest thing that's happened in the last month or so is that me and a coworker don't have a disagreement. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, I just like stopped going outside. I'm I'm just on the internet, tw- uh, nineteen hours a day. Easy. That's fair. If you're if you're home all all day, that's that's I don't know. Yeah. I I don't see how people. I don't know how you do it. I really don't uh, understand the working from home thing. I guess it, it makes easy. sense in my head, but when I try to do it, when I try to do anything remotely work related from home, I, it takes me for goddamn ever. I I ended up the last couple of times I tried to work from home, like we had snow days where it's like I can't come in and do prep, so instead I'll just do, you know, um, work on you know Excel sheets and work on uh, scheduling or something stupid. And I'm, I come home and it's like. Or I, you know, I go up to my computer and I'm sitting here for like maybe an hour and a half doing something and then I get bored and I'll go do something else. And like, and I'll clock out in between those times for sure, but it's like, I can't keep focus on it. I get almost nothing done. And then like, I'm like, I'll stop and do something else for like an hour and then I'll come back to it for another hour and a half and then walk away from it. And it's like, basically I worked all day long. Like I just enter, you know little bits bits and pieces here and there and i might have like seven hours of work together over a 12 hour period Mm -hmm. and i hate that i I can't i can't do it Uh, i think what part of it is as counterintuitive as this may sound to anyone who might happen to be listening i think we are both actually very disciplined people (laughs) like for real i mean i know i didn't used to be you've always been but we are both like pretty fucking disciplined, and I know you're, you're you you are super self contained. Like you don't need people to be solid. Mm-hmm. But I do think it may just come down to that. Even though you don't need people, I think part of you is still very extroverted. I can so, see that. So if you're stuck at home and there's like not not that outside work pressure you're just like okay chilling yeah no i I, i'm absolutely i I shut off when i come home yeah and that's because you've always worked hard like that so it's going to be harder for you to start up at home on your on your own but you you would get into it if if circumstance changed that's probably true for me it's so much easier i i actually was just thinking i figured it out yesterday why i like the medical coding so much so like it's the same thing of why i became so obsessed with with music and then movies and then podcasts and video creators is because it helps me to stop thinking about how i feel 
And that's mm. wh- why I listen to stuff so obsessively. And yesterday I was thinking about it. I was like, why the fuck is... Because I'm so tired after I, I get off, uh, like just mental focus wise. Mm. But then I can immediately go into art or writing or podcast, whatever the fuck it is. And it's because all day at work, I was not thinking about how I felt. It's just, it's just numbers. It's just code. It's just mm-hmm. med- medical terms. Like, and it's high paced enough that I'm not thinking about like my emotional bullshit. Right, right. So it actually like gives me a really good balance because like when I was, you know, building pools, construction, any manual labor, as like focused you are on, on the job, it always felt like a meditation, right? Yeah, but, no, we're, absolutely. We're, but at the same time, for me, that often was like, I'm thinking about every moment of my life, from the past to the future. I'm thinking about how I feel. Like, I'm just like... It, it gives deep. you too much time in between where you're stuck in your own head there. Yes, yeah. dude. And I, especially without drugs, like, I have to get out of my head a lot. That's so. one That's one where I, I don't like doing prep work for that reason. And unless I have, like... um. I'm by myself and I can listen to a podcast. Mm-hmm. I don't like having that. I like the the stuff of like, you know, like during service, like I I do prefer that to prep shit because I'm I'm in the moment and I have that thing where I can turn off. I'm not thinking about anything else. To it almost to a, a negative degree because I will forget to drink water and shit like that and like we I've gotten a lot better about it in the last month or so. But the, you know, it, it was a it was a huge problem for a while. If like I wouldn't eat, I'd, I'd work, you know, like fourteen hour shifts and not eat anything. Yeah, and uh, just because it was like, well, let me just do this one more thing. Let me go. I'll finish this first, and then, and then something else comes up, and like, well, let me just go do this. And you, you know, you're you're focused on the job at hand, and then suddenly it's. 10 minutes to close and you're like, well, I'm not going to stop now and eat because like we're almost out of here. I can clean up and then we'll get out of here in a, an hour or so. And then I'll eat. It's, it's, it got me, it, that started me off in a bad way, but it, it, it's very unhealthy, but yeah, I, I do the exact same thing with art. And I, I, what I think it is, right. Is like, I, I, I consider like passion or, or like, true love of something to be to be the things that you're you're willing to do even at detriment to yourself yeah right or yeah where it's just such a strong passion or obsession or just the compulsion to do something that you'll you'll stop taking care of yourself you'll reject the need to to drink water, eat food, go to the bathroom. Like, yeah, and that is, it, you're it doing can, what you love. That it can is start flow off re- state. It can start off really innocently too. Like I've noticed that yeah. in the past, especially with drawing. Cause I, that's one of the reasons I draw less now is because I, my, the, the thing I like about it is like, I can turn off for hours and just like, and just go. And I, I usually would spend, you know, at, at a time would be like eight, eight, nine hours at a time just going. Yeah. And it would be like, I'm not eating during that time. I'm not, um, occasionally like, I'd have a, a drink nearby, but I wouldn't, you know, like remember to drink it very often. And then like, I'd all of a sudden it'd be like, Oh wait, I got to go to the bathroom. I haven't gone to the bathroom in five hours. And you know, that was, and it, it didn't, it seemed innocent enough because you're focused, you know, you're just, your, your attention's elsewhere. <clears throat> But when, um, when it, when you're doing it to yourself all the time, that's when it can become a problem. Can I raise a question? Please do. All right. Trying to think how to frame this best. All right. So if, if once, if we, if we do it, feel free to be like, I don't feel like doing this right now. But, (laughs) But can I make a friendly confrontation? Sure. All right. Remember, this was oh, maybe 20 episodes ago. Mm-hmm. We did an, 
we were talking about hanging art on your walls, and you had got back into drawing a bit. Yeah, yeah. You knew this conversation was coming. Yeah, well, I, I, so I also, I knew in that time that I would definitely be falling out of it again, just because of my work schedule. I know. Do you want to talk about it at all? Or I mean, I'm down to. I, I don't really don't think there's a whole lot to say about it, besides, like, I look forward to getting back in the drawing. I, I've actually um, been, like, working on a list of, like, things to, like, housework stuff I want to do on my day off on Friday, and I want to... uh one of the main things is like organize my 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 office, like where I have all my art supplies and shit, because the season's going by pretty quick, and it, it basically ends for us in like October ish, early November ish, and I absolutely want to like dedicate more time during that to like basically jump immediately back into drawing. And I know I know you will go in and out, but. And for real, if at any point you're like, fuck off, I will. No, no, no. Go ahead. But, but at the time, you were very certain that – I don't know if it, if it was like a, a discipline thing or you were just excited to be back in, but you felt very certain you were going to like stay constant with it this time around. Um, I feel like I definitely knew that I wasn't going to be able to – in, in the summertime, I mean, we we can oh, go okay. we can go back yeah, and okay. listen to it. I mean, I I feel like I was pretty pretty. I got you. I knew that like this season coming up, it's just it, there wasn't going to be time for it. I wasn't going to do it. Um, can I, all right, let me. So go for it. Do you do you feel like, and it, this would be a very acceptable thing. Do you feel like it is your true passion, or do you feel like the things you are doing are? I feel like the things that I'm doing are. I, th- I, feel, I thought you would answer. I, that I feel like I, and I was That's just sta- saying this to someone else earlier. It was like, um, and it was it's someone else that that I, I work with that, um, you know, they they know that I have an art background, and they were talking about some gallery that their friend is putting together, and um, they were looking for like local artists or you know people to that wanted to showcase stuff there. And I said like I haven't, I don't make shit, like I don't make pieces and stuff like that. Like the last thing I really made was. I made a book for a customer because they they made me a hat and I wanted yeah. to make them something nice. And th- it was, uh, you know, I, I really just, I don't do it. And I realized, I, I, I told them that I, I get a lot of my my creative outlet from doing stuff like uh, the, the podcast or not or doing stuff like, like work. You know, the podcast is one, but like the, the cr- this job in particular has been really good for it because – it's really like everything we put out is really pretty and it's all kind of the same, but it's in a way I, I feel like each thing that I, you know, the, the smoothies is one thing you put in a fucking blender and it doesn't, but we make these like fruit bowls that have like, it's organized really wet, pretty. And like you drizzle like the honey and peanut butter and shit on it. And it's like, you know, the little touches where like all the colors, all of the, the pieces are there. You can't really fuck it up. It's going to be good. But to take all those things and like make it like picture perfect every time it's still it's it's fun to me practice. yes yeah and it, i've gotten to the point now i can make those fuckers in my sleep like i feel like i could really i could cl- you know have a blindfold on and probably put put them together but it's would still I, fun what i would so i thought you would answer that way that you're you're pursuing your passion that's, that's what you're supposed to do yeah that's uh, that's what I, I realized a, a little while ago, not a little while ago. It was like shortly after I started getting into the culinary thing was because I, I got into it after we looked at, you know, the art schools and it was like so fucking expensive. And I, I wanted to get into like video game design and like, you know, some animation stuff. And Dude, this suddenly made so much sense. You're so practical. Even your creative choices were in part your logic. Your science brain. Yeah, yeah, you know, but but I, I looked at it like, okay, they're they're super expensive, but also it's like you're spending, you know, fourteen to eighteen hours a day behind a fucking computer, and it's like I want to draw, I want to do, you know, I realize there's no, I realize there's no, you know, jobs in drawing really. There, you know, that you start with that, but you have to go on to other shit. So I looked at like illustration and like advertising artwork and stuff, and I realized what about I just architecture. 
I had looked at that too for a little bit, but I, I know you would love it. I realized that I just architecture is shitty because you're never doing something of your own. The that's generally, I mean, that's that's also true with you know the animation and stuff. Parts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the, but the that was another huge part of it was like I'm not, I'm not doing my own work. I'm doing something that someone's telling me to do, and I don't I don't operate well like that with art. I just I don't if I'm not enjoying what I'm making. I learned that in school was like if I don't enjoy what I'm making, then I don't give a fuck anymore. That's why I rarely do commissions. Like I can't tattoo. I can't do professional graphic design. We're the same with that for sure. Yeah. I I learned that in um, high school when so I went to our our school. It was a four through twelfth grade school, and so I went there from the fourth grade. And the idea was like we learned. At the very young age, that like, oh, you go through this program and you see what the the you know the seniors were doing, and they had all kinds of wild shit that they were doing, and it was almost like, you know, they got to a certain level, and then they were allowed to like, you know, work with like do whatever the fuck they want, and then like the teachers would like, help them with the media or like whatever they're doing, like they decide like I want to do this project, and they say okay here's how here's where to start you know maybe some guiding tips along the way but like make your art because they're building their final portfolios right yeah so as i got older uh you know and i got into those classes and then you know junior year come around i'm like i'm in the final stages of this and it's you know every everything we're doing is like no, do it more like this, though. But do it more like this. I know I see what you're doing, but do it like this artist does it. We we're like copying another artist's style or, or something for an oil painting. And I tried to tell him, like, I don't fucking like oil painting. I just don't. I, I do well with acrylic. And I tried to like, like vouch to like, hey, let me use acrylic paint and do the same project. And they didn't want, want to let me do it. It's like, who the fuck does oil paintings anymore? Number one. <laughs> very few people very few that people are incredibly talented right and the ones that do it you know like the ones that do it that you know of they're incredibly talented they're super good at it i just i don't like the medium and i but then we are trying to copy some other artist style and they wanted a specific like it had to be a landscape or and it was like i don't want to so fucking do this though i know and um and that made me mad so that that's that was another thing that clicked in my head like i don't want to do art for for a living because then it's not fun to me. It's fun to me because it's something that I do for myself. Um, yeah. But the culinary thing was a translation for of that for me. It was like I still make things. I still accomplish the even like this the the career oriented like accomplishments of like doing really well and like taking manage, management roles and shit like that. Like that felt like I was able to feel that kind of. Um, that thrill, I guess, for me was the same as – Yeah, the, the exactly the satisfaction of that was cl- similar enough to me as the – as what I got from art. But also, it was open-ended enough that I could walk into a place and it's like you don't fucking apply to the place if you don't like the shit that they serve. If you don't want to learn how to do what they're doing there, you know, it's not like someone's going to force you to do something you don't want to do. So – all right, let me let me preface this. Yeah. I have always absolutely loved your art mm-hmm. and I love and respect the work you do in general. I, I think the stuff you do with culinary is so cool. It's something that I think prior to knowing knowing you your professional work and seeing what you do, I, I don't think I ever would have on my own respected it the way i do now like i I think that's That's really cool totally fair there's there's a lot of that i see in especially in different trade stuff yeah Um, learning learning through oh there's fireworks going off i (laughs) um the uh different trades and stuff that i'm Especially as I'm trying to learn a little bit of of it now, but like growing up with my dad and like my dad does a bunch of utility repair and stuff like that. Like I learned to respect like, oh, wow, that's, there's a lot of shit that goes into this and like, like HVAC shit where like 
you have to have so much shit on hand. Like you have to have all these tanks and all these dials and all these tools and, and you know, you have to carry them up fucking, you know, have, have a ladder and be able to like multiple ladders, you know, carry shit up to the fucking rooftop and like. You know, for pe- there's people that do it, you know, my, my dad did it by himself for a long time. Like, that sucks. I, I have respect for it because it's like, I don't want to fucking do that. Like, that's such a, like, I, I think it's fascinating. But, like, I can't imagine doing it. I, I have mixed feelings, all right? Because, like, I did the, you know, trade stuff with pool, like, me and my buddy would have that down to a fucking science. It's like a smoothly operated machine. I I respect I, I respect it so much. Like people that have their own art form, their own craft, their own trade. But there's always part of me that feels like like if if I was doing those things, I would feel no creative satisfaction. And that's totally fair. Yeah, I, I think especially with some of the, you know, utility type trades, there's there's subtle things for sure, and it's there's subtle stuff of like the way you know how clean you put on the you know the pipe thread or you know the epoxy on something or like the 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 cleanliness of you know the how you put something back together like how perfect it was it's very satisfying to you know not have not put something together and then realize you have two extra screws and you're like oh shit dude Um, for for a little while i worked with these two mexican mutters they did wall mud stuff oh shit dude they were they're like i mean as good if not better than any of those videos you see online these guys were master level (laughs) artisans of their trade right they they would do the type of shit where they would dunk their roller their mud roller paint a whole wall in a couple minutes right where it would take crews you know four dudes an hour to do what they would do in minutes Mm -hmm. you know it's it's one of those things when you get to that level of doing shit like that where you master yeah when you yourself like look for certain qualities in a thing when it's finished like you know it it should look this way you know and that's that's top notch and when you walk into somewhere else and you see someone else's job doing it and you're like wow this motherfucker knew what the fuck they were doing like i get that with going to different restaurants or like when i meet different chefs or something and i um like the joe bar job was kind of cool for a while because we had these guest chefs come in and they their menus yeah. and stuff and sometimes most of the time we you taste and they're like this is good like this is fine and then sometimes you meet people and you're like oh man this motherfucker knows some shit they 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 have a a whole sect of knowledge that i haven't touched into they they there's just something something very specific about it like they're they're tapped into it and that's a really cool i i feel like the the all of that the learning the, the, you know, having something new to learn, that's always a huge part of why I like culinary because there's so much shit. But the, the trade thing, especially, is like, it's so, I don't want to say common, but it's, it's a necessity. It's part of our, our world now. It's part of our, our life is, you know, you need these utilities and to have, you know, especially there's all these things on Instagram I follow of memes that are like, uh, you, whether it's like welding shit, like welding jobs. Or, um, you know, a wiring in a house and they show like how, how perfect something looks and, you know, did you, or, did you know that's what my girlfriend Sarah does? Was she wiring? Was welding. Oh, welding. Hell yeah. I've never done it myself. I'd love, love, love to learn to. She, it she looks lo- fun. She loves it. It's just, she just, she went to school for it and everything, but she found that. And I think maybe she would feel differently about it now because she was a little bit younger, but the industry was just like a not fun place for for her as a woman. She felt I can absolutely believe that. I do too. And I feel like most most utility it. and like construction things. I feel like that's probably true. People fucking suck. Yeah, people suck. All right, so I got I got two two threads I want to 
pull into a bit. The fir- the first of which being is what I was my thought earlier. I, I love and re- respect your work so much, right? Mm-hmm. Your your passion. <laughs> no, there's no there's no but. Your passion has pulled you in a different direction than mine, but we're still in the same realm, right? Right. Yeah. Like yeah, there's yeah. our I think purposes are still pretty far away, but they overlap, right? Yeah, I I, I definitely see the overlap of. You said it's passion. Mm-hmm. It's it's something that I I realized when I was trying to get out of the culinary thing for a while of like I I wanted a regular jerk off job of and which I defined as like you know retail or like I don't know like an office something like just to see what it was like and I realized like very quickly like I would hate that that would suck yeah I enjoy the the scrappiness of the kitchen life there is a also hard yeah there is a there is a a part that I find romantic and it's not the part that everyone like all the movies and you know the we were just talking about this all the TV shows and shit that they put out about like mm-hmm. you know what it's like to be a chef and it's like it's so it's it misses the point so much that it's yeah that's why I was curious if that this new show came out that we are talking about we hadn't watched it but it's called The Bear and it's about a chef and it's a really good actor and I'm hope it Looked like it might be a better portrayal. It's a, um, it's a flip from Shameless. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to. I want to for sure. I want to watch that and Th- this give is, a review. This is kind of goofy, but that actor. I think I'm very biased because he looks just like Tony. Really, not dead on, but more so than I've ever seen another person look. So I'm I feel very uh, like uh, charitable to him, but he is a really good actor too. He is, yeah, he's he's phenomenal. But uh, what I, what I wanted to get at, so like we overlap in passion, and obviously that overlap has led to things like our friendship in general, this podcast. But and this isn't a but for you, but in general, mm-hmm. I do feel a pretty big disappointment. In that all of my favorite artists don't make art. Like, I'm the only one. That's fair. I think it, that you're, you're, you know, well within your rights to be and it's not at that. It's, it's not specific to anyone. But when I think of, like, all, all the great artists of the past, all, all the masters, all my favorite living artists, like, I might... You know, in many cases, their art is going to be better than people I know in real life. Mm-hmm. But my favorite artists were the people, the people I cared about, the the people I still do, the people that I watch their art progress. Like those yeah. are my, those are my favorite artists, and a lot of them, like yourself, still still make art they still do stuff but it isn't their like uh primary passion anymore right. yeah or, or in a lot of cases they it still may be but you know their lives fell apart or whatever yeah and it, it's just what life comes in the way of instead it, of supports it yeah i just there's so much art that i wish those people i cared about made mm mm-hmm. mhm I, like I, I just always wanted to. Uh, I don't know. Have uh, more of more of like an art community thing, and I've been very disillusioned. Dis- I'm not sure if I'm using that right, but I used to always, like felt so strongly like do a collective, half group, whatever. I did some of those things, but it just. I, I understand there's exceptions, but I I just don't believe in that anymore at all. Mm-hmm. So that that second thread I wanted to pull into was that I feel as much as I want to be part of like that art group or to, or to grow in artistry with people I care about, uh, I strongly feel art is a a solo sport that. While collabing 
can, you know, there's exceptions. I'm not right, of course, in, but uh, but I definitely absolutes. I know exactly what you mean, though. Yeah, like I I don't grow in my art from working with people. I, I pick up things in my study of people, but I don't. Very rarely do I grow much from that communal aspect or yeah. whatever. If you're if you're doing collaborative work with people, it's for the fun of it. Because Which, you you yeah. like what they do and you you know you, you like what they do whatever you know. There's opportunity for share. growth, but through that. But I think it's for me. I think of like all of the art I have made and ever will make is already inside of me, and it's just like a matter of grinding, mining, whatever, teaching that out of yourself and. The, Maybe sometimes people can help you with that a bit, but it's still always primarily a solo endeavor. Yeah. It's a lonely endeavor in that respect. Right. I, don't know. Dude, I, mean, I just, I love your art so much. I love Sam's art. I miss, um, we've talked about it before. Hannah's art was just insane. There's so many people from that, you know, I just, Wanted to see what they had in them. So I, I do. I will say I absolutely miss the days of, and I, I did it in college. I did a, a decent amount of like the smaller pieces, but still like what I would call finished works that I ended up giving away almost all of yeah. um, when I left. The just the the nights where it's like I don't have to be at school in the morning, or you know at least until a certain time. Like I'm gonna stay up until three o'clock in the morning and and just draw and just go for it and you know play with pencils and listen to fucking buckethead it was so exciting then too yeah because it was new not that it isn't as meaningful still but it was very exciting then now here's here's another one was i um in in college, the only thing that held me back from doing more artwork than I already did was I was smoking a lot more weed then, and I I hate doing artwork when I'm inebriated in any way. I don't like drinking beer and drawing. I don't like the definitely not smoking weed. If I smoke, if I you know take an edible or something, like I'm done. I'm not. I'm not fucking picking up a pencil. I'm not fucking with shit because I just – I don't like the outcome. I don't like – and I blame it on that I don't have the the full – my full mental faculty is I don't have my full – yeah, my full control over myself. The secretary's out for lunch and the memos are stacking up in the brain office. And that might be like a cop-out too of like, you know, I'm not going to try as hard because I know I can't get the thing I want to and then I'm not into it and I quit but – where if I'm sober, it's like there's nothing holding me back other than my own skill or, or you know, my own pers- perspective. And if I, if I don't like the way this is going, I have the ability to fix it. It's not like, oh, there's something holding me back from getting the result I want or at least being able to blame it on something else. That one still holds true, too. I tried to do that recently. I was drinking a beer while I was drawing and they got – Opened my second beer and got halfway through it, and it was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm done." I think that that may speak towards your, uh, in part genetic, but also just just who you are. Where it's you don't have that that specific, and I think you have parts of it, but you don't have that specific like empty hole in your brain that you you need to fill. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Where like because because you're doing something that you're passionate about, that kind of gets in the way of it. it, like cheapens it or dirties it. I you know, I I don't actually feel that that's true. I feel like it's it's it was I was mostly I would just get frustrated because and I I think I talked about this on here before where like it was I tried to go for, you know, some level of realism. There's definitely some stylization going on there, but I'd like to get into realism. And if my perspective's off because and because I can't focus on it, 
because I'm fucking baked, then it it would just ruin it for me, and I wasn't having fun. And like I'd question it and look at it, and then I'd over question it, and and then I just I'm in my head and I'm worried about it, and it's like okay, never mind. Uh, aside from the being baked part, that that's one of Sarah's biggest art blocks, and I think I think it's a a common one in general, just the not being able to quite achieve whether it's realism or just the exact result that the person envisions can be frustrating. Yeah. And I, with, especially with, I mean, I feel like perspective is fun when I'm, when I'm sober, I feel like it's a fun puzzle if I'm fucking something up to stop what I'm doing and like realize, okay, this is fucked. Why is it fucked? And then like, it's it's troubleshooting because a lot of it's just math of like, well, how big is this supposed to be? Is this bigger than this is supposed to be? Then, okay, maybe that's the problem or maybe the this line is just out of place or this is curved too much. And I, I do enjoy that when I'm sober of like troubleshooting, mm-hmm. you know, don't like to have to do it too often in art, but you know, it's uh, you know, it's just a part of it. Oh. And, and when I, I realized also uh, the last time we talked about art, we had talked about me doing more digital stuff. Mm-hmm. And part of what it means when I get a new PC is that I'll be able to take my laptop down to my art studio and just do, do that shit there and do digital shit. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Definitely. Yeah. The under the influence art is never been a factor for me i feel like uh and this may be like super arrogant but whether like if if i had somebody that felt as you do were like using uh whatever substance was negatively affecting their art let's say that's situation a and and then like situation b just like general art student whatever yeah f- felt like they loved art but they couldn't quite embrace embrace it even though it was their passion because they were they were stuck there was something they they didn't understand or they couldn't get comfortable enough and relaxed enough to like get in the zone i feel or even a person who just didn't know how to do art but they loved it i feel like if i had two hours with a person in any any of those different scenarios like i i truly feel like i walk them or teach them through that i i I don't oh i I believe that i believe that to be true about you it's such a because it it's not about the art at all it's just like a pure emotion thing and if you can like there's a mental block and 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 literally it's you know any kind of like even if it's writer's block or whatever like you can get through it there's you know yeah there's a pathway through it to navigate it and it's always easier with someone that is that has been there and knows the ways to provoke it and like yeah. to guide you through it. And I feel like absolutely I can see that in you of a person that's – you're part of the podcast thing is like you're really good at pulling up questions or like poking at like certain things. And it's like things that I don't think about or questions that I don't – I haven't asked myself or stuff like that. And I like that because it's part of the – you know, brings more conversation in. Um, and I can definitely see that about you with, you know, like we don't really talk that much about like artist block other than, you know, when you tell me that you're experiencing it and usually I'm just like, oh, that sucks, you know, <laughs> but it, it's, uh, you know, there's definitely a, a trait of you like, when, we, when we were playing D and D recently and you were, you know, just the, as a level of manipulation, <laughs> That you can you can manifest in a way that's like let me just. I was tweet. pretty pr- proud of that. That was really good. It was so good. High really. level politics, <laughs> sober me, tongue let, politics. Let me just tweak the way you're thinking about this, <laughs> and and it, and it works. And it, you you are you're really good at it. You're quite persuasive in that way. But yeah, I can I can absolutely see you could be a uh, the next uh, Bob Ross. Go do some, you know, maybe not Bob Ross, but like one of the people that does one of the classes for Bob Ross. I I honestly think if like I I did some like a very brief amount. This is no brag at all, but some of those like uh, volunteer things where you would do art with, uh, 
I don't, I don't know how to properly say uh, autistic people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just some of those kind of things, and I had so much fun doing that. I feel like I would really enjoy like teaching either people in similar situations or or like younger kids or like new artists, you know? Yeah, be fun. I yeah, I I also I I think that's a cool. I get I get a lot of joy out of working with my talking with my niece about artwork. You know, she's. I don't think she does it as much anymore, but um, the the little because you can see it in the way that she draws and the way that she would you know would she's co- yeah she would constantly do stuff at you know at, when she was twelve making art that was way better than what I was doing at her age and I was in art school by then yeah you know and she uh, the just the the attention to details and the fact that she does it for her, you know, she does it for the fun of it and, and she gets a kick out of it, but she's like super creative with it. And my nephew, you know, he saw her doing it and I was drawing with her alongside her one day and he was like, I want to draw him. We're like, yeah, 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 go ahead. And he would get frustrated because he couldn't, he wasn't, you know, I was trying to like give him instructional stuff on like how to get something the way that he wanted it. And then he'd get frustrated because he couldn't do it. And then he would, uh, you know, like I'd tell him like, well, he wa- he's like trying to draw a face or he's trying to draw something. And I was like, you know, we'll draw a circle. And he'd like real heavy handed, like drew a heavy circle. And I was like, no, no, like I, I drew it first and I showed him like just super light. And then he would like just kept doing like his like super heavy, just one line. It's like he, I was like, well, just, you know, sketch it out take your time with it like it doesn't have to you know don't put it in stone like i i didn't i didn't do a good job i didn't do a good job i wanted to but it was like when you don't have the i guess someone that has the the already built skills that they've kind of taught themselves and the the eye for it and like he is by no means he is a you know a drawing type of kid he's smart engineering wise and shit he likes taking shit apart and putting it back together and shit but but um, uh, to be to be honest i and not speaking to him at all uh but a person let's say you're teaching someone to draw that circle right yeah and they are struggling to not to press harder than they should right Mm -hmm. that's not a it can be but generally that's not likely a technique problem no, the, right? that was a, that was him getting frustrated with yeah, someone, it's emotion, yeah. emotional regulating. Yeah, that's exactly thing. what it was. Yeah, and that that is hard. Yeah, that's but, the one. Like, I can't, I can't help you with that. I can't. I don't know. I don't know how to fix that. But those people or help not fix that, but help you with that. Help you sure. guide through that. Yeah. But those those people that can figure those parts of art out are are the people that can really go far too. Yeah. If if that's yeah. what they're drawn to, but I guess not even specific just to art. I know we've probably talked about it a bit before, but I I I really do feel it m- most of the time it's frustrated, but I think it's really just because I I feel disappointed. But I I feel for so much of my life I was the person that was not trying. But even even when I wasn't, there were things I still always felt compelled to pursue. And I think I think now that I'm like trying in a lot of different ways with my life, I I I feel pretty disappointed. This is not specific to art or anyone in particular, but I I feel really disappointed in general how how many people around me it feels like they don't they don't want to try to, right. to follow their passion or, or or just in general to to, to do anything yeah it's disheartening yeah. sometimes and it i never it, you, i would think of you as one of the people that's an exception to that which is in part why i've always respected what you do and felt drawn to be around you but in general, it, it it it's kind of. I never 
would let it dictate what I do. But I wish there were more people I don't know, around me who wanted to do things. Yeah. We, we, I mean, we've definitely had the conversation before of like people, like when you meet people that are like, don't have goals, don't have like a, you know, don't have a, a, a passion or at least they're not will open about enough to talk about it. Like they're either embarrassed by it or they like don't, you know, talk about it. Like I think that's wild to me. The people that are, cause I've, I've definitely had, you know, uh, coworkers or, you know, people that I, you know, you're shooting the shit with and you're like, so what do you want to do? Like, do you want to do this for the rest of your life? And they're like, I don't know. It's like, what do you mean? You don't know. <laughs> like you don't have, you don't have any, like, like doesn't even have to be a five year plan, but like, it's like, some, why the fuck did you even get out of bed today? Then? Yeah. Why, <laughs> why, how are we, what are we this doing here? <laughs> yeah. Like, how can we be having this conversation if you don't know? It's like, it's fine if you're doing something that, you know, it's not your, your end goal, especially in, in, yeah. in the culinary thing. There's most people in the culinary industry. That's not what they want to do for their career. They're doing that because they need a paycheck. Those transient ruffians. <laughs> it's like, I, guys, super, I, I get it. It's absolutely not for everybody. Like, I fell in love with it. There's, there's so many goofy things about it that I really like, but I don't, I absolutely never expect other people to, to feel that way. So, but it's still like, it blows me away when people are like, I don't know. And it's like, at least if they come up with, I don't know, I've, I've thought I have a couple different ideas or something like that's, that's great. That's better. But like had to say like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't have anything. There's nothing, there's nothing that I have any goals for in the rest of my life that I'm, you know, have any, even if you don't have a plan of working towards it, it's like, I Inclinations don't know. even. Like, I, I, I think it's probably, probably fair to say I have a slightly more, <clears throat> nihilistic bend than than you do mm. but we both have some of that right yeah. and even at like my max worst like shooting dope trying to die kind of shit right mm -hmm. no plan uh did not really give a fuck about anything but i still felt compelled to do things yeah. like e even if i felt in full despair or that I truly believe nothing matters. And a large part of me feels that way today. Like it's just part of who I am. But I still, e even knowing it doesn't matter, I still feel the compulsion, the obsession to make something. Even if it's mm -hmm. just a temporary escape. Like I, I, it, I struggle to understand when people, even if, I don't know. Even if I know it's meaningless, I struggle to understand not feeling the want to do anything. Or like, even if that's drugs, like it has to be something. Yeah, I was gonna say, man. Even if someone just said, like, you know, you know, like, well, what are your plans? Like, what are your goals in life? It's like my goal is to get fucking strung out and stay there. And it's like, <laughs> cool, man. Fuck at least yeah. you got, yeah. At least you got a plan. Like, you got a goal. That's what's up. I want to shoot dope in every major city across the world. Yeah, it's like, like, dude, God that's bless. good. God's good speed. luck. That's a lot, man. Go for it. <laughs> I respect that. Yeah, I, I respect that. You, you, I can't get upset about that. That's like, like send me a postcard. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely. Is it my goal? No, but you know, fuck. You got some kind of conviction to it. I guess cool. You got, you got some kind of plan for yourself. <laughs> you I know. do think we're. We're in a, a kind of. I think we're in a some interesting places in a way. Not not that they're unusual places, but I think where we're at, maybe, maybe more typical than than we think in some ways. That but, would you say? Like you mean like you and I? Yeah, like just just it, in it, general in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's like fair. the conversations we're having at. Like this point in our lives, yeah. But I definitely don't think we're breaking fucking doors down. But no, and and we might not that there's expectations at all. But like professionally, independently, with creative goals, with podcasts, with whatever we're doing, we may never like 
I don't know, quite achieve what we want, but I know both of us are the type of, are now the type of people that aren't going to give up pursuing those things, even if it's yeah. just, uh, even if it's just for fun. Yeah. I mean, for the, so for the longest time, one of my goals, especially like getting out of culinary school and stuff like that, like my plan was have my own business have or have something of my own. I, I changed it to have something of my own by the time I'm 30. Like, you know, something career wise of my own to where I was working for myself kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I realized over the, you know, many years of working in restaurants, like I was learning a lot of, it was mostly like what not to do because you don't, they don't teach you that part in school. They teach you, you know, these are good practices, do, do these things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't teach you like, hey, don't yell at the kitchen for using too much, you know, uh, bottom shelf Punch wine in the, in, yeah, using too much white wine in the uh, chicken piccata and then get, leave the fucking restaurant every day with a double shot of Patron true it's That's like big. you can't you can't do shit like that like you're you're blowing you know or the restaurant i worked out as a finer dining place and they packed house every night every night not just on the weekend every goddamn night and then you know the, the paycheck time comes around and they don't have any fucking money for their staff or they're not paying the bills and it's like where the fuck is all your money going like i know there's not a lot of food waste like like y'all are drinking it or you're smoking it or something. Like, I don't know. So like all the little That's goofy shit that just kind of you learn from observing made me realize I don't want to fucking own a restaurant. I absolutely don't want to own a restaurant. I don't want to own a bar. I definitely don't want to stick my fucking money into something like that, that I know unless I am doing all of the work myself, I can't, I don't trust anyone else to do it. Right. So I, I enjoy being a sous chef, being the, uh, you know, the person that's second in command. I like having a leader. I, as much as I enjoy being a leader myself, it, it's a lot of fucking pressure. It's a lot of shit. You know, you're working constantly, like at least as a second in command, I'm able to turn off sometimes. And, uh, that's what I found in my current situation where I am, uh, you know, I, I, I really do enjoy the work that I do and I, I'm able to turn off on the weekends and I know my boss goes home and does more work and then, you know, stops at like the grocery store on the way to the spot where we have to go to take the truck and like all this other, like he's doing constant shit and I'm just kind of like showing up and doing it. But I, I really do. I, my, my multi-year goal is now like, I'm just going to stick with this company for the while. It's the first time I've been on a, what didn't look like a sinking ship in a long time. Like it absolutely looks like this, this business is going to work and I'm, I'm fucking hanging out here. It's good business. Speaking of which. Yeah. How cool would it be to be a pirate? <laughs> Holy shit, man. I would. <sighs> I'm so all right, what I was, what I was thinking as you're saying that is I feel like, uh, feel like we probably sound pretty positive right mm -hmm. now which may be a contrast at least for myself as to how i feel a lot of the time where i feel like in the daily moments like i don't, I don't feel good most of the time but i i do feel proud of what i'm doing and i think that is much more important and it pulls you through the shitty times but I, I'm curious how I would have heard us speak even just a couple years ago. Definitely five years ago, I would receive it very differently. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, part of me wants to be a pirate, though. Man, I'd like the, the destruction uh, and escape of it all. Like, how cool would it be to, to hunt a whale with a harpoon in a... Uh, the, the warm, right, I guess it'd be cold, the cold ocean waters, right? The, I don't know, to live and die by the sword would be, is awfully tempting too. Yeah, that seems, that seems more up your alley. 
you you seem less tempted by the chaos. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, that's fair. The the whole um, I don't know. I like I like to know what I'm doing tomorrow. I like to know what I'm doing. You know, this weekend kind of thing. I like to have that that plan in my head too much. I I do too much plotting of like I had my boss share with me like our entire event schedule like we have a work schedule that's separate but like i want to know like what's what events we're doing as a whole for the next you know this summer because i want to be able to see like okay so we might be doing this thing today but i need to be ready to be doing this thing next week or i need to be able to plan my schedule around it or plan prep around it or you know, know that we need these things. So when I send him a report that says, "Oh, we did good today," but you know, we're going to need these things on on the truck. But I, I know, I know you're that way, and I I've become more and more that way. But isn't there? Let me rephrase. Is there part of you that also misses the story of it? The the feeling of like. I could storm the castle tomorrow and, and die a a violent, tragic, beautiful death, and and then the story's over. But you know, maybe I make it through, and there's this crazy adventure. Hmm. Do you do you? Uh, is I, there part of you that wishes you threw caution to the wind more and had had those? experiences that you can't have when you know what you do the next day maybe very like in a very minor way but it's it's definitely i don't know i feel like i because i i've thought about that not too long ago about like you know like how i spend my time already and i now i'm pretty cool where i'm at i'm pretty cool with the with the current sitch it's just, I, especially I, as we get older, man, I just feel like, uh, I really feel like it's a defense mechanism. The older we get, the faster we perceive time. Because I, I feel like it's going to be gone so quick. And the, the safer, the safer it's played, the, the more, the, the more remorses I have in a way for not having uh, I don't know. Taking more, more of those chances. I mean, that's fair. It's a contradiction, you know. I feel like probably whatever one you choose, you want the opposite. My life was chaotic. Now I want it to stable. But the more it's stable, the more I wish it was a little less stable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there's definitely times where I've thought to myself, you know, like they say, like with you, if someone made a movie of your life up to this point like would you watch it and it's like yeah probably not depends like, on who directs it yeah right? that that's absolutely <laughs> true like maybe it wouldn't make a crazy movie or anything but it would be like i i definitely don't have any regrets i feel like i i partied a lot when i was young i kind of burnt myself out on that and i didn't want to but imagine all right imagine you know, fuck the party and whatever. It's it's fun the first yeah, time. Yeah, well, I just mean, you know, like doing something exciting. Yeah, imagine doing a, a, the L.A. bank heist. They died in the streets robbing that bank, right? Yeah, that sounds like a great weekend. They were, dude, they <laughs> had full body armor. They had automatic weaponry. They fired something like 600, 1,000 rounds. And a as they're bleeding out, they're injecting um, insulin. And there was another, I believe, I believe it was a psychoatic upper that would keep them from, you know, going uh, hypo, whatever, and slowing down too much. So mm. they were injecting to stay alert and not... <laughs> go unconscious as that and like that that's obviously the the most extreme example right right like that's that's full pirate mode and probably making a lot of unethical decisions but there's part of that of i don't know man there's part of the just like the full fuck it we're only here once and it goes quick 
that it, it feels somewhat unobtainable, but the reality is like any of us can choose that tomorrow. And there, there's parts of that where I just, I don't know. I miss, I miss, you know, not to that extent, but taking those, those chances or having that story you're never going to have again. Right. I just, it's crazy, dude. I feel like, uh, it really, like you said at the start of this, you know, the years go by so quick and I, I just never perceived myself having to experience that as a, as a, a remorse I would feel, you know, mm-hmm. the, uh, you know, it gets a lot of flack, but I, I've still always loved that fucking movie Inception, mainly just for the line. I don't, you know, an old man <laughs> filled with regret waiting to die alone. Yeah. Like that is, that is the enemy, right? Suicide and like dying old, but full of regrets. That shit's the enemy. Like anything to, make it not that way even if i think sometimes there are negative consequences like to have a i don't know that excitement or story there's value in that too i'm picturing you having your midlife crisis pretty soon Uh, as (laughs) as possible as that sounds i really feel like uh i feel like i'm gonna go pretty steady i don't know like and, and the whole while talking crazy shit like this, yeah. <laughs> like oh, I just want to fucking kill people. Just want to go pirate. rob a goddamn bank. <laughs> just want to just oh. shoot up and go rob a bank. <laughs> Since the first time they locked down my grade school because of a bank robber across the street, I have dreamt <laughs> of robbing a bank. <laughs> One day I'm gonna be ninety years old, but ninety years old. You know what? If we make we make it to ninety. Yeah, I'll. I'll if, That's when uh if we make it to ninety, you don't have to, but I'm gonna do some PCP and then we'll go rob a bank. You're gonna be my getaway driver on PCP. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get away with two hundred dollars price bills. <laughs> <laughs> Put that money right back into the podcast and double it, baby. <laughs> Oh, they'll find us. They'll find us a couple blocks away in a Wendy's parking lot. <laughs> you need JBCs. <laughs> yeah, boy. Dipping them fries and frosties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goddamn. Well, we got cool stuff coming next week. Is there anything else on your mind? Is there anything you do no. anything tonight? Nah, I got nothing. Chilling. I'm fucking blanked. It's good. That's going to be all for us today. <laughs> thanks again yeah, for I'm listening, the everybody. Time to blank out. Yep. Uh, thanks again for listening, everybody. Thank you to Approaching Human for his the use of his music. You can find his work on SoundCloud at Approaching-Human. Real quick. Th- thank you, John. I've been... He runs a Discord group. It's very private, very exclusive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I've been, I've been making friends with uh, more of these trash wave artists. Some really cool people. We got... I think a couple people want to but i got track somebody somebody sent me just last night that's absolutely killer cool stuff on the way fuck yeah Make sure to check out the show page at trash cats trash cast on instagram and for news and arts from the show and check out facebook for the memes steven you've been posting some killer shit on instagram uh, dude did you see you should check the stories when we get off because there was <laughs> <laughs> Some dude, it's totally an automated comment, but they left a comment like, I see you guys out there repping the hood, and uh, <laughs> I, I could make you guys a lot of money. It was like some influencer, you know, bullshit scam, but uh, yeah, they said we're officially repping the hood on our Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Chaotic salt and just fell out laughing. Dude, that, that was something I was going to say. All right. I think... We, we're going to talk about it more later, but I, I think we're going to have to interview some people soon. We've talked about it, but I think I think we have a couple people that have uh, expressed interest, and I think we would have a lot of fun doing that. I just saw the... <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty and the funny. picture The picture they commented on. <laughs> <laughs> Willie's whistle echoing in the background. <laughs> 
Hit us up on the Insta at TrashCast, TrashCast, or some shit. Uh, my art's um, on Instagram at Skyzik, S-K-Y-Z-S-E-X. We didn't do any honorable mentions, but we got some really cool stuff, really cool art next week. I think that's it, yeah? Uh, yeah, wait, actually, I have one more thing. Okay. I have one more thing, and I can't believe I keep forgetting about it. I keep forgetting to bring it up to you. I think in a past life, <laughs> I think in a past life, you were an Oompa Loompa. Dude, I I wish it was a clown, but I feel like the truth may be more Oompa Loompian. <laughs> the, the the whole the the addiction to candy, the <laughs> the the um weird response you get from the uh, uh the, the Wonka's whistle. Yeah, that's a tell. That's a tell. <laughs> Very whistle sensitive. The green hair sure. and orange skin. <laughs> Fuck, you may be an Oompa Loompa right now. I might be. I think I know what I'm doing for Halloween. (laughs) (laughs) You can be Willy. No, no. make Sarah Sarah be Willy Wonka. (laughs) Oh my god, she'd love that. (laughs) You'd be the, not not the goth uh, Johnny Depp Willy Wonka, just the regular uh, Willy Wonka. That's hilarious, dude. Just a big purple top hat and cape tuxedo golden tickets for day <laughs> <Fuck yeah. laughs> just a full of golden tickets <laughs> all right uh yeah. i think that's uh gonna be all for us today stay classy eat trashy go fast eat trash <laughs> <laughs>